If you're at all compelled about the longevity and expansion of the Miz T Show, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Links below. Hey there, fools. Big T here, and I'm back with another video. This one will be very short because basically, I'm just asking a question in this video. What exactly is the Vania part of Metroidvania? <laughs> uh, I actually thought about making this video probably over a year ago, if I can recall. Um, somebody had asked me at some point to do a video on it. It was something I was actually thinking about at the time and I just never got around to actually making that video. But um, I'm asking it now. What is the Vania part of Metroidvania? Because, you know, a game will come out, a certain game will come out uh, with a certain style, gameplay style, say like Axiom Verge or something like that, and people will refer to it, maybe not Axiom Verge so much, but uh, people will refer to it as a Metroidvania style game. And I'm just confused as to what that means, because mostly what I see in those games is Metroid style games, basically the classic Metroid style of gameplay, where you backtrack, where you find new weapons uh, to make you more stronger, more powerful, to face new enemies and etc. you know, rinse and repeat. Um, and I just don't understand where Castlevania gets credit for that style because I remember playing the first Castlevania. Um, yeah, you could go back, but it didn't really serve you that well. And you just, you know, just go along and you'd find weapons and you'd, you know, you know, face the boss at the end. It was pretty linear. And, uh, you know, Castlevania 2 came out and it was more kind of quote unquote open world where you could, you know, go to towns and all that stuff. But that was, you know, after, I believe after Zelda had done it with the uh, Adventure of Link. And so it kind of adopted that kind of style where you can go to different towns and you have the day and night cycle thing that was kind of annoying. Um, you know, you could get stuck. There was like these secret walls and all this kind of stuff. Um, but like I said, Metroid had already done that uh, when it came out. So that was later. And they went back to kind of the kind of a, me a mediation between uh, Castlevania 1 and 2 with uh, Castlevania 3. It was uh, more like 1 than anything. But, you know, they had some elements of 2 in there as well. But again... Um, anything Vania style or ca uh, Metroid style came from Metroid. So I think it wasn't until maybe Symphony of the Night when people came up with that whole Metroid Vania thing. And I have a sneaking suspicion that somebody in Konami <laughs> came up with it because they wanted to be associated with Metroid. Every time you mention Metroid, you think of Castlevania. Um, I wouldn't put it past some savvy marketer to come up with that because from what I see uh, in these so-called Metroidvania style games is mostly Metroid elements. I don't know what the Vania part uh, in these games are in Metroidvania. Now, I have maybe, a more, well, certainly more affinity for the Metroid series than I do Castlevania, but I played them right around the same time. I played Metroid and Castlevania when I started playing those games. It was right around the same time in my very early years. and. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Metroid or a huge fan of Castlevania, so um, there's that. But I tend to prefer um, Metroid games over Castlevania games, but, you know, I, I like them both. And uh, I just always wondered what exactly the Vania part of, was of that Metroidvania adjective. So I'm, I'm sincerely asking the question for somebody to answer in the comment section or with a video response. What is the Vania in Metroidvania? Because I sincerely do not know. Um, you know, in light of what's going on with, uh, you know, who may be developing uh, the next Metroid Prime game, it looks like it's going to be Bandai Namco, which I don't know why, you know, there's some, I guess, some uh, trepidation. Some people are worried about, you know, somebody outside of Retro making, Retro Studios making, uh, a Metroid game and I'm like well there were plenty of Metroid games before retro came around and uh, truth be told uh, retro struggled with their development cycle of Metroid without you know Nintendo coming in and kind of 
setting them straight. If you remember, uh, early on, Retro Studios was working on, I believe, four games. Metroid Prime, uh, some game tentatively titled Car Combat. Uh, I believe a football game, if I'm not mistaken. Because uh, Nintendo wasn't sure about EA at the time. And also... Um, uh, Raven Blade, the fan favorite Raven Blade that everybody wants to come back to. We really had nothing, <laughs> not that much information on, and a couple of screens, or not screens, but uh, some video footage that didn't, you know, wasn't that, didn't look that great or anything, but everybody wants uh, Raven Blade. But anyway, like, they were so much in shambles, Retro Studios was, that Nintendo said, all right, stop all the other stuff and get Metroid Prime correct, get it done right. Because you guys are faltering over here. And there was a lot of... There was some firing and some reshuffling at Retro Studios. Um, you know, Tanabe obviously headed the headed the uh, team or whatever. Uh, and everything that Retro did was by, you know, Nintendo's uh, leadership. So, um, obviously they had to cancel all those other games to, before they could put out the masterpiece that was Metroid Prime. And it was a masterpiece. But there was some troubles there. So it wasn't like Retro... It's not like Retro Studios is the only studio that they can make a good Metroid game. And I understand, you know, there's some hesitation because of uh, what happened with uh, uh, Team Ninja and Other M. A lot of people don't care for Other M. I'm one of those people. Um, I don't hate the game. It's just not a good Metroid game to me. Uh, but mainly because of the controls and the story. I don't understand why um, it's only using the... Wii Remote never made sense to me, especially when you're doing all this pointing and stuff like that. But I just, uh, I just thought about it because of all that, you know, that's going on there. There's uh, some back and forth Twitter wars and video wars occurring. Let's, <laughs> let's, uh, we're gonna take it to the gaming streets next. Uh, it's kind of silly, uh, but I need to figure out what the hell the Vania part of is Metroidvania. Sincerely, I do, I do not know. And uh, I think Metroid, for me, for me, Castlevania is getting credit for Metroid's, you know, Metroid's style of gameplay uh, for some reason. I think that started to happen, like I said, in the mid-90s uh, with the uh, Symphony of the Night. And this whole Metroidvania thing came out. But you know, you had plenty of Metroid games. You had Super Metroid, you had Metroid 2, Return of Samus, you had the original Metroid uh, that were out already before um, Symphony, Symphony of the Night kind of adopted that whole style. So I need to know. I sincerely need to know what is the Vania and Metroidvania. That is sincere. So maybe you guys can let me know in the comments below or with the video response. Either way, that would be great. Thank you guys for listening and watching, and I'll see you fools next time. Peace out.